What is good guys, we have a P2 vs ABR for SPL week 3, the first Sun and Moon OU match for this week. Uh, P2 bringing stall, didn't expect this, if anything I would have expected it from ABR. Double unaware stall with no regenerator, more interesting. So P2 is just gonna lead Sableye here, ABR is either gonna lead Hitu and Uncle Fable. Um, P2 is playing for the Tigers, ABR is playing for Wi-Fi Wolfpack. You guys can still expect more week 2 matches the next days, I'm gonna focus on week 3 at the moment though. I have some week 2 games in the bag, I still have to narrate some of them. Um, so if this is Rocks Clef with either Toxic or Command on ABR side, it's gonna be really important because then it can get up Rocks versus a potential Pressure Zap those. Pressure makes it so you have more default PP than Rocks, but if Clefable has Toxic or CM then it can force Zap those out and get up Rocks. So that's potentially gonna be, that's gonna be super important for ABR if he has one of the moves, either Toxic or CM on Rocks Clef. Because then he can get up Rocks and Rocks are gonna be really huge in this game if he can get them up. So P2 is going to protect or recover here, and ABR is going to either Magma Storm or Lava Plume, depending on the Heatran set. This Heatran could be a few things. It could be Leftovers Bulky Tran, it could be Scarf, or it could be Z Move. Um, looking at ABR's team, I think it's his only potential Scarfer. His only other potential speed control would be T Wave on Clef or Pharaoh Thorn and Bullet Punch on Scizor. Or Bullet Punch on Scizor is what I meant, yeah. So P2 just wants to get the Mega up here. Let's see if he goes for Knockoff. There's a Lava Plume. So that is. Confirming that it's potential Scarf Trend that sometimes runs Lava Plume. I think left user Lefties uses that a lot. He goes for Protect, making me. Th he goes for Recover, making me think that he doesn't have Protect. So his other move slot, I don't know what it would be. It would be interesting to find out. And Aura sometimes Sable I used to run Foul Play in the last slot. Uh, maybe I can go into Clefable or Scizor here because P2 is not gonna go for Will Wisp and give Heatran a Flash Fire boost. Looking like P2 has a lot um, for ABR's Clefable, as and he has two unaware mons, he has a Chansey and he has a Celesteela. But if the Clef is either CM or Toxic, like I said, it can still get up rocks and it's gonna be pretty important to have hazards up for ABR. The Ferrozon is gonna be Spikes, Leech, Sheet, Power, Blast, move either Knock Off or T Wave or Gyro Ball, not sure about that yet. But I'm expecting ABR to go ABR to switch into either Clef or Scissor here. There's the scissor expecting a knockoff. There's the mean look. Oof. So if the heatman stayed in there and it's choice scarf, this would have been trapped in. And even if it gets the burn bonus nerfed, so Sable I could have potentially beaten the heatman down. The thing is, if he had knockoff, then the heatman would have been able to switch up moves. But I assume um, P2 would have still been able to beat the trend one v one with the Sable. So that's an interesting set. Uh, it would be really interesting to know what what that mean look is for exactly. So ABR is going to U-turn out, he gets a crit. Expecting, I'm expecting the Clef to come out or the Heatran, most likely the Clef though. P2 goes for mean look again. Um, I don't know what he expected there. But yeah, P2 can either switch out here or he can go for recover. So he stayed in, which makes me think that he's definitely heavily spadef invested. Now he's going to switch into his um, Chansey or his Anawa Clef or his Celesteela. One of the ones that deals with this Clefable. The thing is, um, yeah, so he's basically gonna be able to PP stall ABR's Clefable because he has the Unaware Clef, he has a Celesteela, he has the Unaware Quag, and a Chansey as well. Chansey only takes damage from Clef if it, Clef goes to like plus six. So there's, there are the rocks, so it's CM rocks. So that's what I talked about earlier. If it's either Toxic or CM rocks Clef, then it can get up rocks versus P2's team. That's really nice and important for ABR because otherwise, without rocks, this game is just gonna be super tough to win. So P2 is now going to go back into either Clef or into Celesteela. Um, maybe I could Moonblast once to ch check the damage, but I think it's smart to not spam Moonblast that much because you kind of want to be careful. You don't want to waste your Moonblast PP. You already got up rocks, so um, at least P2 is taking chip when he switches around, but you don't want to waste all your Moonblasts. But using one or two Moonblasts shouldn't be too bad. And staying in with the Clef at the moment is nice for Aria because Zapdos doesn't want to come in on this on Defog. And as long as ABR has rocks up, it's going to be nice. Also, he can, um, later when the Zapdos comes out to Defog, he can then knock it off with the Tornadus. Or with the Gliscor. One of the two is definitely going to have knockoff. Yeah, I'm not expecting P2 to stay in here for sure. And ABR's plays either Moonblast or switch out into like Tornadus or Ferrothorn here. I mean, this game can go either way, but ABR having rocks up is a nice early advantage for sure. Now, P2 is forced to heavy slam pretty much. So, ABR could go into his um, Gliscor here, or he could go into his Heatran. 
I think Glisco is a good play, yeah. Because you activate your Toxic Orb, which means you can switch this in later on in the Sableye without having to fear getting knocked off. And that way you can keep the leftovers on your Clefable. Now, AVR could go for a knockoff here. I assume P2 is just gonna um, either protect or go on his out just to defog. And he just roosts. There's the leech sheet. So he wants to keep his uh, Celesteela healthy, which is understandable. But yeah, now I'm expecting to either go Zapdos or just click Heavy Slam. But he kind of wants to be careful with his Heavy Slam PP. He doesn't want to just spam Heavy Slam. There's the Heatran and the double leech sheet. Okay. Nice play, but he already used two leech sheet now. And. Using 12% on Tron is not that bad for ABR. Wait, I thought Leech does a different. Leech does 1 8th. I, I don't know if. I thought it would do a different amount. Okay, back in the Gliss score. If it has knockoff, this is the time to go for it. There's the Zapdos. And the Zapdos does not have pressure, and I'm really surprised by that. This is gonna have play a huge role in this game. Because Clefable has more rocks PP, even if it doesn't see him. Glisco has taunt as he roosts, so now he can't even defog. Roost knockoff taunt, so the last move is probably Earthquake. That set is gonna be able to put in some work, SD would have also been able to put in work. So the Zapdos, if it doesn't have Heat Wave, I think if I'm ABH here, I would. Um so basically, the P2 is staying in here, to waiting for the taunt to run out so he can defog. But the thing is, he, it seems that he doesn't have Heat Wave, so I, I was gonna say maybe I should scout for Heat Wave, but if it's Feral is Bedevit, could have taken a Heat Wave. So the Zapdos is most likely Roost, Discharge, HPIs, and Defog. Now the Taunt is gonna run out here. Maybe I should um, probably go for Spikes here because the Defog is super obvious this turn, and P2 is not gonna go Sableye, right? Mm hmm. And, I mean, if P2 goes into save line now on another spike, at least ABR still has a spike up on the other side. And ABR's team is not really that weak to spikes. Um, he has Regenerator on Torn Tornadoes is in the air, it doesn't touch the ground, it's not affected by spikes is what I'm trying to say. Glisco is not affected, Clefable has Magic Guard, it's not affected. He Power Whips there on the Roost, good play. Power Whip covers the save line and covers the Roost, so good play by ABR. But I'm expecting P2 to want to defog here and um, I'm trying to get a para. Because if he can um, defog and get a para, then he can afterwards switch into Sableye. The thing is, this Ferrothorn, you kick this in the Celesteela, this Ferrothorn being paralyzed is actually really nice for ABR because it means it cannot get burned. And it can potentially um, help him in a PP stall war later on in the game. So I'm not I'm not a big fan of Static Zapdos with Discharge at all on stall. Because I think on stall you want to like, um, he doubles into Zapdos, he wants to defog. I'm pretty sure he has to switch out here though because... Scar feature and I think it's gonna have overheat. So I'm expecting either the Chansey or the Quagsire to come out here from P2's side. He cannot stay in and lose his Defogger this early. But yeah, him not having pressure and him having static plus this judge is really weird. Because on stall, I think you wanna either burn or you wanna toxic the opposing mons. But if you para them, in some scenarios, that can be really bad for you, that especially parrying Ferrothorn can hurt you. So it's Overheat Lava Plume, pretty much confirming that it's Scarf Trend. The other two moves are most likely gonna be either Earth Power Flash Can, or um, maybe HP Ice and Flash Can, but I assume Flash Can and Earth Power. So now P2 could um, get up his rocks. I assume ABI is just gonna U turn out here because if the Zapdos comes out, he wants to um, prevent the Zapdos from defogging if he can. But yeah, like he has these, okay. That's the S toss. So yeah, P2 can either switch here in the Stellar Dealer. Or he can um soft bot break in the U-turn from the scissor. Other moves on the scissor are obviously gonna be roost and bullet punch. Yeah, trend all revealed to not be left over. It's pretty obvious that it's scarf trend. Chad is talking about Tren isn't leftovers, yeah. Has to be Scarf in my opinion. I think the only trends that run Specs are Scarf and Specs. The only trends that run Overheat are Scarf and Specs, yeah. Yeah, Zapdos is at 51, he doesn't want to go Zapdos here. I think ABI is in a pretty good position with these hazards up. And Zapdos not being pressure is also huge. 
because if it has pressure, not having heatwave, not having pressure, both are potentially huge in this game. So it, like it's uh, most likely HPIs instead of heatwave to um, deal with like Landris, which could be a threat to this team even though he has a Celesteela. I could still see, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, smack, it could still have Smackdown and be a threat. So if the Zapdos is fast HPIs, then it can deal with uh, Landris and so I could see why he's running that. Because that is a potentially huge threat to his team if it's a Z move. Landris. If it's Smackdown Sky Strike, that could be a huge threat. So P2 gets crit there, which is annoying. What did he go for? Softball or rocks? I went for rocks. I'm expecting the knockoff or the taunt here from ABR. Taunt is probably fine. P2 doesn't want to stay in here, obviously. He can go into Sableye or he can go into Zapdos. Like if Abiad wants to keep his spikes up, then he can taunt here expecting an outcoming Zapdos. Or if he breaks the Sableye, he could off quick here. He does the Zapdos and we do see the taunt, ensuring that the spikes are going to stay up, okay. So now, P2. Um, I guess he's going to scare out this Glisco with a potential HPI. Depending on ABR's set, if ABR is not Spadef, he might not want to stay in. Exactly, he goes Ferrothorn there, predicting HPIs. P2 goes into his Celesteela. Now he can Flamethrower here, as if ABR has knockoff on this Ferro, he could go for it. That crit sucks a lot. Um, but yeah, having the Celesteela knocked off is amazing for ABR because Celesteela's only recovery are uh, leftovers on Leech Sheet. And he can potentially um, try to go Pharo later on Leech Sheet or go Clef on Leech Sheet as he does go Clef on Leech Sheet now. Ooh, hard play. So now the Celesteela is already getting Leech Sheet stalled. And the only other way for P2 to get the Celesteela's health back um, is Clefable's Wish. Also, um, if ABR can get rocks up, the Celesteela is getting chipped even more. Goes in the Gliscorda, completely fine play. Now P2 is most likely going to defog here. Maybe I can just go back into Ferrothorn to... Because like he's not going to take anything from rocks. Yeah, he goes in the cliff. Okay, he doesn't want to risk his Ferrothorn because he would uh, take HPI's chip. Now, um... I think AB is either going to rocks or CM up here. Yeah, I, I think what ABR wants to do is later, he wants to get the Ferrothorn in when there's no rocks and on a free turn so he can get some leftovers recovery. So yeah, mining up first is the play because then you scare out the Zapdos and he can get up rocks. And P2 is going for the Pyro now, yeah. This Clefable is giving him a lot of issues. That crit sucks. Oof. Zapdos being knocked, not having pressure. This is, this is all not going in P2's way at the moment. So now he comments up again to make sure to scare the Zapdos out and now he can get his rocks up. P2 has to switch eventually into his um, into his Steeler. Wow, I thought he would go into his own Clefable. He doesn't want to take spikes, but yeah, this is the thing now. Um, the Steeler is forced to have his slam and it doesn't have leftovers and it's getting chipped. So now ABR can go into his Gliscor here or in his Heatran. I assume Gliscor is the play. He gets, okay, okay, he does want his rocks up. That's understandable. Because the Clefable can easily heal up later in the game on the Quagsire. So I do understand the play. He goes in the Heatran now. I personally would have gone into Gliscor because Heatran getting chipped might not be in the most... That that might not be what you want if you ABR. But he's he's playing this fine. Like, he's still in a really good position. He protects the uh, scout what the Heatran locks itself into. Now he's gonna have to go into um, most likely Quagsire. Because if I recall correctly, Chansey was super low and cannot come in on Hazards. Yep. Quag is at full. Yeah, the Quag is gonna come out here, and ABI is just gonna fish for the burn. Obviously, Celestia cannot stay in here. Zapdos also doesn't want to come out. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why um, he's static Zapdos with Discharge on stall. I think pressure is definitely better in most scenarios. Unless you're weak to something specific and you want to fish for Para versus that. But I think you can check most stuff and he should not have be static. 
Yeah, obviously rocks are super valuable for ABR, so his play made sense. I just thought he wanted to keep his Clefable at full, but since um, he's fist, uh, max defense, obviously, with ZM, that's like the only set or the most common set in Sun and Oyo, that was a fine play, just getting up rocks, and then, like I said, he can heal his Clef later on the Quack. He can also heal it on the Chansey or on the Sableye. The only reason why you wouldn't want to heal it on the Sableye is because that could potentially have knockoff. So I think the main switching that ABR should use on the Sableye is the Gliscor, because even if that gets knocked off, that doesn't worry. have to worry about that because it has its orb activated already. It has the Lava Plume, let's see if he can get a burn. And there's the burn. Um, so P2 is going to recover here. ABR is going to have to switch out. And yeah, there's this opportunity to heal the Clefable, he's just going to softball here. There's no point in staying in for P2, so this is because this is Magic Guard Clef, um, there's no point in fishing for a burn. P2 is... Um, what is he gonna go to? He's either gonna go to his own clef to throw up a wish or he's gonna go Zapdos trying to defog. Yeah, he goes Zapdos, he wants to defog all these heads away. So defog is gonna come out here and ABR is probably gonna go for Calm Mind. And now ABI could um, Moonblast or Rocks. Yo, rocks go back up. And since the Zapdos doesn't have pressure, Rocks are uh, gonna have more PP than Zapdos has Defogs. So unless P2 gets the turns to right and goes into Sableye on a Rocks a few turns and gets that correct, then the Rocks are always here to stay. And Zapdos not having lefties, Celestia not having lefties and Rocks being up, this is looking definitely in ABR's favor. So there's the Faro Thorn. P2 is Calm Mind Unaware Clef, that could potentially win the game for him, but he has to get rid of the Scissor first. And he also wants to switch out here because he doesn't want to let his Clefable get knocked off. So he does just go into um, Sableye. This is Para is completely fine, that doesn't matter to ABR, knockoff wouldn't have done any damage. I would just go into um, Gliscor here from ABR, because obviously it doesn't take anything from Sableye. Sableye can't do much to that. The other option is going into Clefable or into Tornadus, but I think Gliscor is... The, the one that he should bring out on Sableye most of the time. So he goes in the Torn, there's the mean look. Now... P2 is probably gonna go for... Um, <laughs> recover here, maybe? His Chansey is still too low, so that cannot come out. I think his Zapdos is at around half health, so Zapdos also might not be the play because that would die to Hurricane into Sky Strike. So there's the recover. Here we are getting the confusion, so he can fish for some confusions here. P2 doesn't want to risk it. Okay, Zapdos was at full. I could, for some reason, I thought the Zapdos was chipped um, as he gets the para there, but that's not in P2's favor at all. I don't know why he's static Zapdos on his team. Because, like, when ABR gets para later on, that's completely fine. It doesn't matter to ABR. I just don't understand it, why you would run static on stall. Um, yeah, okay, if Zapdos was on at full, then he could have also hard Zapdos instead of recovering. I thought it was at 75 for some reason, and then it would have potentially died to Hurricane to Sky Strike. Um, I have not calculated this. Maybe I should calc on my phone if that's offensive Hurricane or if that's AV Hurricane damage. I think it might be AV because it only did 30 to the Sableye. Um, if Overheat kills, P2 has to switch out here into his Quack. If it doesn't, he can roost, but this is working out completely fine for ABR, because Zapdos is losing roosts. Because it's keep switching in on rocks. Yeah, basically Blunder's asking in the chat, um, if overheat goes to minus two, it would still be as if it's neutral. So like Quag will take a lot from overheat. Um, if he's Spadef Sableye and that's able to take two overheat, maybe he can go to that, but he does go Quag. This should do like... Okay, that's just Lava Plume. If you would overheat, that would have done like, like 38, I would guess. Something like that. So yeah, maybe I can go into Quax, uh, uh, into Ferrothorn here. Or into um, Gliscor or Tornadus. So like, parrying the Tornadus is bad. Because um, now Tornadus is another one that can switch in on Scald from Quag. Also Gliscor and Ferro can switch in. Basically, Ferro and Torn both being parried means they cannot get burned, which is bad for P2. He Lava Plumes again, knowing that P2 is going to recover there. Um, was a fine play, I didn't think he had to make that play, but it was fine. Pharaoh comes out here, that does nothing because of the burn on the Quag. Now, Celestila, Zapdos, or Sableye is gonna come out here. I 
I assume we're just gonna see a power whip from ABR. No, we do see lead seed, okay. As my computer is about to die, let me plug my charger in real quick. I don't want my computer to die in the middle of the recording. That would be horrible. Okay, so ABR is gonna switch out here into Clef or Torn again. This is kind of repetitive. But yeah, um, if the Sailor has knockoff, we don't know that yet, then it would be it would be smart for ABR to switch out and not let the Pharaoh get knocked. Because the Pharaoh with lefties and paralyzed me, which that cannot get burned, always gets lefties back later in the game. So he does go sell the Steeler there, not sure what he predicted, but... Let's see if ABI is Heatwave, he does get paralyzed. But I assume we're gonna see a Heavy Slam here from P2. ABR could either switch in the Gliscor Tran or he could also just stay in because if he's um, max HP AV Torn, he's gonna be able to eat up the Heavy Slam. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is AV Torn. So, uh, ABS team probably doesn't have a defogger, but he has rocks and spikes, and that's gonna force the opponent to defog a lot of times. And in this match, you guys can see um, P2 is forced to defog a lot of the times. And since ABR has double hazards, yeah, I mean. <laughs> He did get a full parallel twice, so like, he does miss a lead sheet there, which sucks. That's a flashback to week 2, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw week 2, um, Poik versus P2, that was a hexy game. I think the flashback maybe was about the double crit in week 2, or was about the lead, did he miss a lead sheet versus Poik? I don't remember. So he protects to see what the Hedron locks itself into, now he can go back into Quack. I still think the chance is low, so he can't go to that. So he has to go Quack here because uh, obviously he doesn't want to risk Sailor like getting burned. Quack is already burned, so he should go to that. Um, yeah, this game is going to take pretty long, but I think it's definitely in ABR's favor. So we see the Quacks that come out. ABR can Lava Plume again here, but I think it's unnecessarily risky just in case the Quack attacks here. I would just switch out. Mm-hmm. No, goes and Torn gets more regen. Like, honestly, I just don't see how P2 can win this game. Maybe his Clefable can win. But, uh, no. His Zapdos and his uh, Steeler are already knocked off. His Quag is burned, which means it cancels out the lefties and is forced to recover a lot of the times. Eventually, his Monster gonna run out of recover. Because uh, ABI has Hazards up, which means he always gets chip damage on P2's Mons. He can now go Gliscor here, or he can go into Scizor. He has a lot of options. I think Gliscor and Taunt is a potential good play, just to prevent the Zapdos from defogging. The only way P2 can like um, take advantage of a Taunt is going into Sableye and then bouncing the Taunt back. But even then, he still has to take Rocks. So, like, uh, this is uh, heavily in ABR's favor. So, there's a scissor. Um, I assume we're gonna see a protect or a hard switch into Celesteela or Zapdos from P2 side. He also has an Anawak Quack to ha help with the scissor. That's the Roost anticipating the protect as he just throws up a wish. Okay, so this Clef is most likely max defense unaware because um, he stayed in. Bullet Punch that only does around half if it's max defense. And yeah, he's probably trying to pass the wish into Zapdos or Celesteela, so that makes sense as well, yeah. So I'm expecting ABR to U-turn out here. And it's even if he gets parried, that's not bad for ABR. Because then he also can't get burned on the Scizor. There's the Heatran and... I'm expecting a Lava Plume over here, here from the Tran. And P2 is most likely gonna go back to Quack. And his Quack just is forced to recover all the time. And it's just not looking good for P2. And his Zapdos keeps taking rocks. Um, now, Clefable, yes, it can keep Zapdos and Steeler healthy with Wish Pass. Two months that don't have lefties. But it cannot do that forever. And ABI just never takes hazard damage at the moment. And P2 always takes chip from hazards. Half his team is already not getting leftovers um, because Quack is burned, which cancels out the lefties, and the other two are knocked. And I just don't see P2's win condition at the moment. So if I'm ABI, I would switch out here and not risk the Quack attacking. As he does risk it. 
but P2 just recovers so it works out for ABR. Now he should switch though into Tornadus, Glisco or Ferrothorn. There's the Ferrothorn. Now um, either Zapdos or Sabler is gonna come out here for P2. Uh, I would probably just power up here if I'm ABR. So he gets paralyzed, which is completely fine for him. He goes into Cell Stealer, okay. I thought he wouldn't go Stealer, I thought he would wanna defog. Or go into Sabler, try to predict the lead seat, or try to predict the spike. So now um, P2 is potentially gonna flamethrower here, so obviously IBR doesn't wanna stay in good play. I'm going for lead sheet because I covers the Heatron and the Gliscor. But Gliscor is a completely fine play on ABR side. You guys can see he already he only has 10 lead sheet left. So like this is not gonna be able to get health back uh, forever, the Celeste dealer. So he protects to see what the Heatron knocks itself into. Now he's gonna go back in the quack side. This is just repetitive. And it's just looking heavily in ABR's favor. Like half his team is Two of his mons are paralyzed, one of his mons is toxic, so like, and, and has poison heal, obviously. So like, those mons all cannot get burned, he never takes chip damage from hazards, and P2 does take chip damage from hazards. You turn out here into Tornog, Glisco, or Pharaoh, okay. Like, all three are fine. Um, the reason why Pharaoh is fine is because of the Quack being burned, so that means, also he was forced to recover there. Quack being burned means Earthquake does nothing to Pharaoh. So yeah, back into either Stila or Zapdos. That's the power. Completely fine for ABR. He's just getting leftovers here. He's gonna switch back into either Heatran or uh, Glisco. I would always go Glisco just in case the P2 goes for Leech Seed here. Because you don't wanna let. Oh, he dodges. That sucks. But yeah, that's why I would have gone Glisco. Because if your Heatran gets chipped, that's unnecessary in my opinion. And Glisco has poison here and just gets health back. Obviously, that sucks. But like. I don't see P2 winning this game. Anyways, like even if that he missed. Like he missed a seed there. Like, I don't think that matters. I don't understand the stall team's concept though. He only has 90 sheets left. I don't understand why it's static Zapdos at all. Like, if you guys know, understand why it's static, feel free to explain it to me. <laughs> My man Dennis in the chat. ABI learned by his battle versus Telly and his Manaphy. I don't know if he's talking about the game, but there was one game in ulti that Telly had where he had a mana fee that was super low, and Telly kept doubling that mana fee in, and it kept getting leftovers back. I think it was in Telly versus Cosine. But I don't know if um, what game exactly Dennis was talking about. I just remember that game Telly versus Cosine where he kept doubling his mana fee in. That was one of the games. Um, yeah, back in the day when I was not, I didn't have a YouTube back in the day, I wasn't recording. Um, I, I used to just chill on smog tours and not record the games and just watch them like normal like all you other people do and I have to say it's really cool to just watch them like it can be stressful to have to record them but I also enjoy recording them so much and like I just I learned to like love recording these games it's just pretty interesting for, to me but sometimes when there's a lot of games it can be annoying so yeah he's gonna defog here I assume he roosts first okay the reason why I thought he would defog is because I think ABR could have power up there on the roost. So back in the clef, uh, in the quack, my bad. Pretty repetitive here. I'm also hungry, so I hope this game doesn't take forever. <laughs> but it's looking like we're gonna be here for a while, and it's. I think it's heavily in ABR's favor. I can just repeat myself. As I had some bug on my computer, let me get rid of that boy real quick. I'm not gonna like kill him or anything. I'm just gonna. I just don't want him to be on my computer. So ABR staying in there, as he stayed in the earthquake once, which I don't think that was the play. Um, like. I don't think ABR can lose this game at all, but I still would not have um, stayed in with Heatran because having Heatran healthy is uh, nice. So I would just always go either Pharaoh Torn, Clef, or Gliscor. I would never like. On a turn where P2 can potentially attack the trend, I wouldn't stay in, is what I'm trying to say. But it, it's not gonna matter that much, I think. So ABR can uh, either command up here with a Fable, which means uh, P2 cannot defog for free or just Moonless. So now P2 is forced to roost. Maybe I can uh, go for command up here. And yeah, this is an Zapdos not having pressure. I can just repeat it. it. Means he doesn't stall Rock PP. He doesn't stall Moonblast PP. He doesn't stall Lead Sheet or Spikes from the Ferrothorn that much. So like this is just bad for P2. And you can see Moonblast pretty much does around half. So ABI is gonna able to is able to keep Rocks up. And even if P2 catches him and goes in a Sable Eye, he's forced out the next turn anyway, and ABI can get his rocks up in the long run. And rocks don't hurt ABR's team that much. Torn has regen, Gliscor has poison heal, Pharaoh resists rocks. Clef has magic guard. 
The only th two mods that care about rocks are Tren and Scizor. Tren is pretty much dead soon, but like... The only thing that Tren did in this game was like, it chips the Quag and forces the Quag to recover and it burned it. So that's already something for ABR and he doesn't need the Tren to win anyway. Now the Moonblaze chips down the Steeler. Steeler is forced to heavy slam pretty much. ABR could stay in here, but I think switching is a better play. Switching into either Gliscor. Or, I don't think risking Pharaoh is worth it. He goes Tren. I mean, I think Gliscor is the better play, but this works. Now, P2 can either go hard into Quag or he can go for Protect. But yeah, the Steeler not having lefties is huge. Um, pretty much a Steeler without lefties is a dead Celestealer. Steeler. That's how I see it. It's just hard to keep Celestealer healthy after it loses leftovers. And yeah, I might re repeat some things like four times because this game is just repetitive. Uh, we're gonna reach turn 100 soon, it's still 6 versus 6. But ABI is just in such a good position. It's it's not the most interesting game to watch, but I'm still gonna keep recording. So he scolds there, gets a crit, doesn't matter at all. Maybe I can see him up here. Man, I'm getting super hungry. I hope this game ends soon. He just Moonblast. Um, P2 is gonna recover here. Yeah, it was a completely fine play. See, you guys can see he only has seven recovers left on the Quagsire. His Zapdos is losing Roost. The Celestealer is running out of Leech Sheet and is low on health. His Chansey is super low, so... Like, he can heal Chansey, but he wants to have the rocks up off the field first. And he can only heal Chansey on a few months. If he heals it on the wrong one, like if he heals it on a Taunt, then he can get knocked off in the process. So he's gonna try to Wish Pass here. Uh, into Zapdos, Quag, or Steeler. Probably... St if Steeler can eat any hit after rocks, then Steeler has to play here. Because it only has U-turn and Bullet Punch, so P2 knows the Steeler spread, he can just put that in the Kalk. I assume the Scissor doesn't have attack investment or only minimal attack investment, but he goes Zapdos, okay. And yeah, P2 is pretty much forced to defog here. Maybe I could U-turn out or he could SD again. Yeah. So now, since the Zapdos doesn't have Heat Wave, um, maybe I could afford to make that play, he Bullet Punches. P2 predicted the U-turn there and goes into Underwear Clef. Yeah, Bullet Punch has like a lot of PP. There's like 48. So like the PP game is just an ABS favor. You can also fish for crits here. P2 is going to have to protect here if he wants to keep his Clefable healthy. Now he has to wish again or switch out. But he cannot really switch into much. He could go Quag or he could wish again. Yeah, he just wishes again. And protect again. And if he has this healthy, nice play SDing there, keeping another BP PP. Um, yeah, if he has this healthy again, he can potentially pass a wish, but I don't think he can really afford to pass it because at plus six, I don't think the Celestia wants to take the bullet punch because if I recall correctly, the Celestia is quite low. Rocks are off at the moment though, so he goes not anywhere quick. No, ABR is most likely going to U-turn out here. As P2 is forced to recover here. And he only has like 6 or 5 recovers left, and maybe I can Calm Mind here and then eventually get his rocks up again. Okay, he gets some hard up, okay. Completely fine play. Yeah, so P2 should Leech Sheet here, breaking his switch, and he needs health on his Celestia, but the thing is he's running out of Leech Sheet. And maybe I just wins this in the long run, like, like if you guys are paying attention to the turns, you can see clearly see ABI has a huge advantage in this game. Like, I don't think it's necessary if there's the overheat. I don't think it's even necessary to go into heat turn on a heavy slam. He could have prevent kept health on Tran. Um, I mean, going Tran on a heavy slam is a fine play, but as this is... I think this is a roll to kill because overheat... Anaware ignores the spe special attack drop from the heat Tran. So maybe I could overheat again here trying to get the roll. P2 could go into Sableye if he doesn't want to risk the roll. I think a Sableye is healthy. I think it's at 88 or at full. Um, what was I trying to say? He goes Zapdos, okay, because he would have been able to take a minus to overheat. And he's gonna defog here, hoping for the power. Yeah, nice play spiking. He knew he, knew he wasn't gonna go Sableye there. Yeah, I would probably lead shit here if I'm ABR. Or um, spike again, put it in the defog. Yeah, I forgot what, was that, what I was trying to say earlier because I'm hungry and I can't think clear. But. P2 just doesn't really have a win condition. So he's trying to heal the um 
the chance he's gonna softball here. But the thing is, ABI can knock off the the chances here. Violet, if he did get paralyzed, he could have knocked it off. So that para is annoying for ABR, but I was gonna say he can knock it off because the chance he stayed in, but he gets paralyzed again. <laughs> so yeah, P2 got lucky there with the para, nice leech seed play. Um, knowing that he's gonna switch out after he got after he got his rocks up and his chance he healthy. He didn't want to stay in to lose his Violet, so he ABR knew he was gonna go into set of steel and makes a nice leech seed play. Rocks don't hurt ABR that much and spikes hurt P2 a lot, so this is still heavily in ABR's favor. Uh, as ABI can just Calm Mind or Moonblast here. I could see P2 just going for Recover here. Yeah, I just don't see how P2 can win this game. And it would be nice if he doesn't, if they don't play this out because it will take long as fuck. So there's the Heat Wave trying to get the burn event potentially. Or the incoming Zapdos or just um, wanting, to kill the, wanting to kill the Stealer. So Zapdos is gonna have to either Defog or Roost. I assume ABR is gonna go into his... Oh, he, he stayed in, okay. I mean, that's a fine play because if he's AV, he can eat up a Discharge. And P2 most likely wasn't gonna Discharge there anyway. But I thought he would go into his um, either Clef or Pharaoh there. Yeah, he can go Pharaoh here, right? Mm -hmm. He goes into Sable, I bring Leech Sea, okay. Gets the play correct, and now P2 is probably gonna recover. Goes in the Tornadus, which is one of the mons Torn and Glisco that can just switch into Sableye every time. They don't have to fear getting burned. And yeah, at this point, it's most likely AV Torn because it showed like Heat Wave, U Turn, Hurricane, I think. What is P2 gonna go for? Mean Look? But Mean Look doesn't do anything because this is. He hurts himself in confusion, that sucks. But like, this just speeds up the game a bit. Like, P2 just can't win this at all. Yeah, this game happened last year as well. Um, last year, P2 brought a... Um, I don't remember if it was P2 or ABR, but one of them had a Bronzong and a Tentacruel. I think it was ABR. That was an interesting game. I think P2 won last year, but yeah, it's looking heavily in ABR's favor. He misses a Lichi there, which is a bit annoying for him. P2 eventually wants to defog, I think. No, he doesn't. What? Like, these spikes just hurt P2 way more. Spikes hurt P2 way more. Um, I think he... Oh, he went in the Sable there trying to catch ABR on a spike, potentially. I think, yeah. Like, the spikes just hurt P2 so much. Zap does not being pressured just sucks a lot. Even if Zapdos was pressured, Clefable would have potentially been able to keep off rocks because it has CM to scare Zapdos. Hmm... Yeah, maybe I can either spam Hurricane or you can just U-turn out. If the Sableye stays in, you can go Glisco. Glisco doesn't care about anything that Sableye can do. We still don't know the Sableye's moveset. We just know Recover and Mean Look, I think. Does it even have will o -Wiz? Maybe it doesn't have will o -Wiz. Maybe it's some other tech. They're talking about ABR has been a bit unlucky. I mean, yeah, a little bit, but ABR is just in such a good position. I don't see how he loses this game at all. And I know sometimes I said it and then the opponent turns the game around, but this time I'm just so sure. ABR has the Havoc game advantage. P2's team keeps getting worn down. ABR's team, besides Heat and ABR's team is pretty healthy, right? The P not only the PB game and the Hazard game is in ABR's favor, like pretty much everything is in his favor. I don't see how he loses at all. So Zapdos is gonna defog force defog, I think. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I can just go into his Ferrothorn, which is paralyzed, because he doesn't want to take HPS with Gliscor, I assume. And Ferrothorn doesn't worry about anything that the Zapdos can do. It goes in a torn, okay. That also works. He tried to knock off the Chansey there, but P2 keeps getting the para. Yeah, yeah, he keeps getting the lucky para. He should switch out here. So this is the first time in this game where P2 has up hazards on the other side, but there's no hazards on his side, I think, right? There's the knockoff trying to catch the Chansey. This is completely fine. ABR can either go into Ferrothorn or he can U-turn. The thing is, eventually, ABR is going to get up rocks again, and P2 is going to be forced to defog anyway. So I would power up here if I'm ABR, predicting the Sableye. Oh, he goes in the Clefable. Oof, oof. So he can just calm it up here, and he's eventually going to get his rocks up. Like, at the moment, yes, 
P2 is finally able to have hazards on the other side and not have hazards on his side. And he stays in there putting the rocks. Good play. But it doesn't matter that much. It's Spite Clef Oof, Spite Sable. I was going to say Spite Clef Fable. So Spite Recover, Mean Log, and the last move I assume knockoff because I don't think anything else on his team has knockoff. So he doesn't have Willowers then? That's really weird. So Spite, um, yeah, just got rid of four rocks PP. So this is really weird. He has Spite Sable, but he does not have pressure on Zapdos. And yeah, the rocks go back up there. ABR doesn't care about this chip on his clef. Now ABR can go into his Gil score or his... If he wants to play it risky, he can go into his Ferrothorn. Because it's pretty likely that P2 is going to lead sheet or heavy slam here. It's unlikely that he's going to flamethrower. But I think um, Gil score is the better mid ground. But he goes into the in the lead sheet. Now... What does he go for? Spikes? Lead sheet, okay. Yeah, Lee Sheet is the better play because um, you don't want to have to say Black come out and have spikes on your own side. I don't, I don't, I would have personally not let the Ferrothorn in on the Flamethrower, but since he's Spadef, he's able to eat that up. Now he can just go into his Gliss score here. Yes, the uh, Zapdos. Okay, he goes Torn. That also works. But yeah, like, this is just not winnable for P2. You can see it's AV Torn because it eats up the Discharge. Now it's confirmed, okay. Was maybe confirmed earlier already, but I haven't really run any calcs. Goes in the Ferrothorn, and yeah, maybe I can just spam Power Whip here because if the Zapdos Roost it loses its flying type, and Power Whip is gonna hurt it. Also, I can just say it, I can just repeat myself, it doesn't have pressure, which means it doesn't stall out the PP from the Pharaoh that well. You can just spam Power Whip here, and eventually P2 um, wants to go Sable, I think, because he doesn't want spikes to go up. There's the Sableye anticipating spikes or Leech Seed. There's the full power, doesn't matter at all. Maybe I can switch out into Tornadoes or Gliscor here. He doesn't have to worry about anything. He could also go to Clef, but he doesn't want to go Clef because in case the Sableye has knockoff, he wants to keep his leftovers. The reason why you would want to go Clef is here because it heals on Sableye, but ABI doesn't have to rush it. He can just play it out slowly and think it through and he will win this game guaranteed. Goes into Tornadoes, there's the mean look. Now ABI can just U-turn out here. Yeah, I would really, I would be interested to know what this set is for to trap specifically. Okay, so he does go clef. I would still switch on a potential knockoff if I'm ABR. Exactly, completely agree with how he's playing this. There's the spike. <laughs> um, because if he moonblasted it there or rocked or CM'd, yeah, CM'd or if he rocked, if he softballed it, CM'd or rocked basically or moonblasted, Spite would have been able. Now nah, he would not have rocked. The rocks were already up. But if, he, if the Clef went for a move there, basically Spide would have been able to get rid of four of the Clef's PP. Um, yeah. If you, like, could explain to me, P2, if you're watching this, what the Sableye is set is exactly for, drop a comment if you want, but you don't have to, obviously. Um, so Chansey, I don't know why, because it's getting knocked off now, yeah. I don't know why that was the play. Um, but to be fair, um, his dealer is low and his Zapdos, I don't remember how healthy that is. He just doesn't really have anything for ABR's team. Like this is just really over. Now Chansey is knocked off, which means, which means it has to take more from moves from Tornadoes, Heatran. I actually like ABR's team. It's pretty like, I mean, the only thing I would f uh, have with the fear from ABR is you're kind of weak to Magnezone and Triple Steel is also weird. I personally would only run Double Steel, but this is uh, still heavily in ABR's favor. And the Steeler they're predicting a Power Whip. Tornadoes can just Heat Wave here. Um, my Thumb P2 is one, wants to switch. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I don't remember, maybe his Zapdos is low, that's why he went Chansey to let it get knocked. He turns out into Glisco Pharaoh, something like that. Goes Clef, that works. Now he can just softball it up because Clef outspeeds Chansey and he also is out of range from Seismic Toss. Yeah, softball is always the play here. You want to. Have your club healthy. You can also go for um, CM or Rocks here, but I think Softball is okay. Rocks first. Works. Completely fine play. Not trying to criticize AB at the dawn. Yeah, he played this like. Like, I don't know why you were trying. I guess P2 was trying to get matchup with Stall if ABR didn't expect it, but AB is like a Stall Lord himself, so it's like. I don't think it's the play to bring Stall versus him. Anyways, ABR can switch into his uh, Torn Glisco here. I think Glisco is the play. I'm expecting P2 to lead sheet, but he's running low on lead sheet PP already. And he cannot keep his Celesteela healthy forever. Even Wish Pass doesn't work forever. He only has 7 lead sheets left, yeah. Okay. 
oh well my computer is gonna take forever or like my internet is gonna it's not that best it's gonna take forever to upload but it's fine in my opinion this game was over like 80 turns ago like I just don't see how P2 can win at all But yeah, maybe I should never stay in here. And so I would probably leech seed if I'm P2. But like I said, even if he predicts ABR switch and goes for leech seed, he's slowly running out of leech seed PP and it doesn't matter too much. He goes into Zapdos, okay. So he wants to rooster defog here. I can just repeat it again. P2 keeps taking hazard damage. ABR's team is still healthy. And P2, P2's bulky mons, they keep using having to ro use roosts or recover and they're gonna eventually run out of those moves and they also got knocked off um, I think Steela, Zapdos and Chansey all got knocked off so obviously um, P2 has to switch here he doesn't want to lose his Zapdos to the Scarf Tran he has to switch into the Quacky I assume he could also go to Chansey if that's healthy I think it's healthy if I recall correctly so there's an overheat miss that would have done a good amount because the Chansey lost its a Violet so P2 is either gonna rock or softball here ABR is most likely going to switch in a clef or Faro Thorn, attempting to get up hazards or scaring out the clef with theming up with the clefable, scaring out the chancy. Did I say clef? I meant scaring out the chancy. So yeah, you just get some leftovers here. ABR could. Um, I don't think rocking is the play here, just in case P2 tries to go into Sableye. But even if he goes Sableye, it doesn't matter that much. I think P2 might want to go for Wish here, trying to pass into Zapdos or Celestila. Yeah. There's the hard Zapdos on the rocks. Yeah, so if this had pressure, that would be good for P2, but it just doesn't have pressure. So Force to Roost, yeah, maybe I can calm it up. Only four Roosts left, which is Heart Moon Blast. Yeah, Zapdos is gonna run out of Roost soon and it's not gonna be able to defog anymore. He's going for the powerful para now, okay? Now he's forced to Roost. I think he only had three left after this. Surprised he didn't wish pass into Zapdos to maybe save some Roost on Zapdos that way. But to be fair, it doesn't really matter what he does. This is just so heavily in ABR's favor. That does a lot with because the chance he got knocked. Oof. So now, um, this is a roll to kill, I think. Probably in ABR's favor, so P2 doesn't want to stay in here. I don't know, if, if the Quack is not healthy, then uh, P2 might have to sack something here. But I think his Quack is still healthy enough to take two overheats. Oh, he could also potentially go into his Sableye here, because the Heatron is at minus two. I don't remember how healthy his Mons are, but I think Sableye should be able to take a minus two overheat and do another one. Also, it's looking like uh, P2 is going to have a tough time healing his chance here. Because without a Violet... He has, first he has to get rid of Rocks to switch it in again, and then he has to... Without a Violet, it's not easy for him to take a hit. He can potentially heal it on the Pharaoh, I guess. But yeah, staying in here is definitely not the play for P2. ABR is just going to overheat again. P2 is either going to have to go into Sableye or Quack, depending on if Quack can take two overheats. I don't know if it can. But yeah, I would um, like if this game would not be like 500 turns. <laughs> that would be pretty appreciated. Okay, so there's the Clef, which is unaware, so it's going to take a lot from this. I don't know why that was the play. Am I missing something here? Now he's gonna protect to get some leftovers. If ABR stays and he also loses another overheat PP. Maybe his Sabler is low and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought his Sabler was healthy and he could have gone to that. But yeah, now the trend is at minus four. Now Sabler, if Sabler was low, okay, Sabler was low, okay. Now Sabler should be able to eat this. Okay, so it would have done, see like even, it would have done 32 and 16, so I guess if he'd got two high rolls, then Sableye would have been had to fear that. But I think he should have gone hard Sableye earlier. So he goes into Zapdos, he wants to defog. Yeah, like, I don't think letting Clef take the hit was the play. Maybe he was fearing the roll. 
as he was fishing for para. Now he has to roost here. Yeah, like now his sabler is low. He didn't recover it up, and that like something is gonna might have to get sacked off here because overheat is gonna. I think he still has overheat PP left, right? Okay, he just lava plumes, and Zapdos is gonna run out of roost. He's hoping for the para here. Oh, he just kills the Tran, obviously. What am I trying to? What am I saying? Yeah, obviously he just wants to kill the Tran. So P2 didn't get six so at least, but this game is super over. Like, yes, I think it was a slight misplay to go clef first and not going hard sap, but it was a potential roll on table, so I understand where he's coming from. But I also think it doesn't matter at all because ABI is heavily in control of this game. Um, yeah, I forgot for a second that the heatron was 11%. Obviously, this chest would kill the Tran. So ABR can go into his Clefable here, or he can go into his Ferrothorn to Power Whip. I think Ferrothorn and Power Whip is a fine play, because if the Zapdos Roos loses its Flying Type and Power Whip is still going to do a good amount. P2 cannot switch out here pretty much, because if he switches his Zapdos loses, dies to rocks, and the Zapdos is his only Defogger. Um, this game been over. I think my internet died, so I'm going to pause it real quick. We're probably going to have, we probably missed some turns, and we're going to rewatch the turns then. I'm gonna click just uh, go back and click on rewatch them, okay? Because that smog just chat is not moving, and I think, yeah, my internet died. One sec, guys. Okay, so we're gonna rewatch these turns real quick. We missed like five turns only. Scissor comes out and SDs up. Zapdos defogs. Zapdos only has one roost left. This game is so over. So he goes in the chancy here, sacks that off. Quack is gonna have to recover here as Scissor U turns out. Quack only has like 5 recovers left or 4. Clefable comes out gets leftovers. Clefable can get rocks back up. Zapdos is almost out of roost and cannot keep defogging and this game is just over. Okay, Moonblast first. He can command up, he can rock here. Pretty much ABR can do whatever he wants. Okay, he goes in. He doesn't want to risk his Clefable getting paralyzed, which is a smart play. Like, I thought... Just rocking there is fine, but ABI is playing it super safe. He doesn't want to risk his Clefable getting para, full parrot down, so he's playing it smart, okay? So yeah, props to ABR there, but it's just me being hungry and I want this game to end already. <laughs> so he's gonna slow U-turn here, I assume? No, okay, he gets parrot. So ABI should hard switch out here, not risking getting paralyzed, yep. Maybe I can go into his Gliscor here, as he obviously doesn't want to risk staying in with the Pharaoh on a flamethrower. He goes Torn, which works as well. Completely fine play. Um, P2 should switch on a potential heat wave. And Zapdos has no roost or one roost left. No roost left, so yeah. The next time rocks go up, Zapdos, if it switches out, it's going to be super low or pretty much dead. Um, I will just power up here from ABR. Oh, knockoff. Knockoff is fine as well. This doesn't do anything for P2, even if he gets the Paras. So he goes um, into Sableye, and he barely lives that. Good play on ABR Power Whipping. He's gonna recover here. Now he just U turns. P2 has to recover again. And th this game is just over. Like, I just don't wanna explain anything. Recover again. Spite. Getting rid of some knockoff PP there. That's not gonna save him. So P2 is forced to recover here. Scissor comes out. Uh, ABR is spamming the U-turn. Nice turn turn core between Scissor and Tornadus. So he's going to U-turn again here into either Tornadus, Glisco, or Clefable. Whatever he wants to literally. This only revealed recover spider and mean look so far. But I'm guessing the last move is knockoff. He just didn't go for it ever. It could also be Wisp. Hmm. But yeah, we're caught up now. We watched all the turns again. We're not gonna we're not rewatching. And yeah, we're gonna hit the 200 turn mark. I could see P2 going into maybe Clefable here, but if the Clefable was low, if I recall correctly. Uh, because the U-turn is really obvious here from ABR's side. He just stays in. What does he go for? They, we don't know his last move slot yet. He just recovers. Now ABR can spam Hurricane. Um, the only flying resist, Zapdos and Steeler are both super low. And they don't really have they don't have a lot of recovery. Zapdos is out of boost. It doesn't have any recovery left. And there's a Zapdos. So he's hoping for Paras here. He doesn't get the para. So now his Zapdos is pretty much dead. Let's see if he can get a full para here. Nope. Zapdos lives on one. So Zapdos is gonna go down every second. Maybe I can just click knock off here if he doesn't want to waste power whip. And he misses a power whip, okay. Um maybe I can switch here into Torn Gliscor. 
one of the two pretty much. P2 should lead sheet breaking that, but no matter what he does, this game been over a long time ago. Obviously, like I said earlier, smart play on AB not risking the para on his clef. So yeah, Steeler getting PP stalled a bit here. He could even go back into Tornadoes. He goes Pharaoh. And now ABR can go back into Gliscor or Tornadoes just in case he doesn't want to risk his Pharaoh from getting knocked off. Uh huh. He can just Heat Wave here. Like U turns. It literally doesn't matter what he does. Into Clef, get some lefties. He got Moonblast here, or he could pivot back into Torn or Gliscor if he doesn't want to risk getting knocked off. It literally doesn't matter. Goes back into Torn. There's a Spite. There's, there's, that's nothing that turn because he didn't use a move. And I would really appreciate if P2 just forfeits and saves me some time. <laughs> Let's see if you can hit the one hour mark in this recording, though. So you turn on a Steeler. Steeler getting chip. Every little baby chip on Steeler is nice for ABR. So he could try to go into Clefable here on the potential Leech Seed, if the Steeler even has Leech Seed left. He could also just knock off, he could also taunt, goes into um, Sable I predicting the taunt there. I assume, or he predicted knock off because he can eat that up as well. Now maybe I can switch into Tornadoes. Yeah, this matchup was heavily in ABR's favor and he also did not make misplays really. I think the only thing I would have done different is not keeping the turn in on the Earthquake from the Quag earlier, but... He was in control pretty much the entire game. And he didn't even risk the para on his cliff, like I said. So yeah, really well played by ABR. And this game been over and I'm pretty much just waiting. Um, either P2 is going to forfeit or it's going to be a long, slow death for his mons. Oh, not I didn't mean to say death. Faint. His mons are going to faint. Slowly but surely. ABR can hurricane. U-turn, Heatwave, whatever he wants. Heatwave is fishing for a burn. Other moves just get some chip. Or Hurricane is fishing for a confusion. I mean, I was talking about... If I mean I was talking about chip, I meant U-turn mainly. Because obviously Hurricane would do a good chunk even. It wouldn't do just chip. But yeah, P2's timer is going down. Maybe he's thinking about if he has some win condition. And I don't think he has a win condition. Yeah. So it would be nice if he just forfeited. Um, so unfortunately, we're not going to hit the one hour mark on this recording. So I think he's going to forfeit here. Yeah, not the not the most entertaining game, but if anyone watched the entire thing, big props to you. GG, thanks for the reminder to only use my own teams. Okay, so I don't know who made this team, but it was a really weird stall. Um, I just don't understand why the Zapdos was static. So P2 just forfeits. Um, so yeah, ABR is um, up. ABR and the Wolfpack are up 1-0 versus the Tigers. Thank you guys for watching, have a fantastic day, and see you all next time with more SPL. Um, yeah, I'm, some of you asked for short lives, like one or two people, but I know most people are just interested in SPL content. I'm gonna definitely keep focusing on SPL for now, and when there's a... When I don't feel like... When I feel like... Um, basically, when I feel like... During a live, I will still do a live on top of all this SPL content, but SPL is going to be my main focus, as we can see here. Uh, Wolfpack versus Tigers. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out. <laughs> Good gravy, what was this game? I mean, uh, if I was P2, I probably would have forfeited like, way earlier, but I understand that he was trying to win for his team. Or just for, also for himself, yeah, obviously, because last week he should have won and he got hacked, which sucked. Anyways, peace out, friends.